Hey guys, welcome back. It's Professor Hank, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to pass pointers as arguments to functions. So let's go ahead and get started. There's there's two key things that you have to remember. All right, one thing that you have to remember is that pointers are just what variables that hold memory addresses. Okay, that's key point number one. Key point number two is that a parameter variable is a variable. Okay, so when you pass a pointer as an argument, what you're doing is you're copying the contents of one variable to another. Okay, so when we talk about passing a pointer by value, it's passed by value just like it would be for an integer or a double or a float or whatever. Okay, so we'll look at that and then we'll also look at how you can pass pointers by reference. All right, now the syntax for that looks a little strange because you may not be used to seeing it yet, okay? Or you might not have seen it ever before. Um, but pointer's a variable, a parameter's a variable, therefore a pointer parameter is a variable and it could be uh, passed by reference as well. Since a pointer parameter is a parameter, you can do pass by value or you can do pass by reference. So we'll see examples of all of that stuff, okay? So let's go ahead and write some code. Okay, so let's start off by taking a look at how we can pass a memory address to a function, right? So we'll create a function, we'll call it foo. And since it's gonna accept a memory address as an argument, we need a variable that can hold a memory address. So we'll call that variable p. And this is going to be a pointer because pointers are variables that hold memory addresses. So we have to have that asterisk involved, right? So that's what designates this thing as a pointer. Okay, so now what I can do is I can dereference P. I can go to the memory location whose address is in P and say, send it to C out. Okay. Now let's go inside of main and we'll create a variable X. We'll initialize it with say nine and then we'll create a pointer and we'll call it Q and we'll initialize it with the memory address of X. So at this point, Q points to X and X contains nine. Now let's call our little function here, foo, and we'll pass it the memory address of X straight away for the first example. All right, so this is similar to if you had a function that accepted uh, integers as its argument, right? You would just pass the literal. Well, this is kind of like passing the literal because the memory address of X gets returned when you're using the address operator right here. So that value is being passed um, into P, okay? So when that function call happens, whenever you make a function call that's passed by value, it's as if you have an assignment statement, right? There's an implicit assignment statement that's going on. So that memory address of X is being copied into P. So at that point, when the function executes, what are we doing? We're dereferencing P. Well, what memory address is in P? The memory address of X. So here we're saying, go to the memory location whose address is in P. Whose address is in P? Memory address of X. Go there and get the value out. What values in the memory location whose address is in P? Well, it's X. Right, it's, that's the that's that's the variable whose address is a p. So we're saying go there and get the nine out, and then put the nine, send that nine to um, c out, so we can display it on the screen. So there you can see that's the nine. Okay. Um, now you can pass the memory address directly, or you can pass a pointer variable itself. Now you'll notice that I just passed q, nothing else. Right? Because I'm not passing the memory address of Q, I want to pass the contents of Q. I want to pass Q. I want to copy the contents of Q into P. That's similar to a statement like this. Right? What do you do with a statement like this? Contents on the right side get copied into the variable on the left side. Okay. So then at that instance of time, when this function's executing, both P and Q are pointing to the same place. What place? X, Y, because the memory address of X was assigned to Q, and then we just copied the contents of Q into P. Okay, so you'll see that 
we're still going to see the 9, okay? Because we just got the memory address of x into p in just a different way, all right? Now, what we can also do is we can dereference p, and instead of taking the contents of x, whose address is in p, and sending that to c out, why don't we put something in x via p, right? So what this is saying is go to the memory location whose address is in p, whose address is in p, the address that was in q, whose address was in q, address of x, all right? So go there and then assign 88 to that location. Okay, so when the food function is finished, the contents of x will have changed from 9 to uh, 88. Okay, so x now contains 88. Q contains the memory address of x. That hasn't changed. All right, so let's, let's prove it to ourselves that both those things are true. So we'll see out uh, Q. We'll say Q equals, so we'll look at the contents of Q which is just a pointer that holds a memory address. And then we will do the contents of X. Okay, so we'll do that. And then after our foo function is done, we'll print out those contents again. Okay, so let's, let's do that. Okay, so we'll go ahead and print it up, or run it, run it. So take a look at the output here, right? So you can see that the contents of Q never changed never change. There is no assignment statement to Q throughout this entire um, program's execution, except for when we initialized it, but it never changed, right? We didn't have a, an initial or a uh, assignment statement to Q other than the initialization. So when line 15 executes, that's the contents, that's memory address of X at that time. And so then when it, when uh, we display the contents of Q after the function is called, Q never changed. What changed? The contents of X, right? Before the foo function call, um, X had nine in it, okay? And then once we're in foo, P uh, contains that memory address, the same memory address that was in Q. And so then we go to the memory location whose address is in P, we assign 88 there. So when we come back from the foo function and line 24 executes, we see that there's 88. And just to prove it to you that the contents of Q were copied into P if you needed more proof, let's print out the contents of P. Okay. You're going to see that P and Q, it's the same. It's the same. So a couple of minutes ago when I was talking about how P and Q were pointing to the same thing at that instant of time, there you go. Okay, so let's take a look now at an example of um, passing a pointer by reference. And by the way, you maybe might have noticed that, you know, the way we were able to access the contents of the, of the X, right, via pointer P, when we were retrieving the contents and sending C out, or in this case, updating the contents of X via P, it's very similar to pass by reference. Okay, it's passed by reference with an extra step, and that extra step is dereferencing the pointer. Okay, and this is what's hidden from you. It's pass by reference works the same way. Um, it's just with pass by reference, this whole pointer management thing is hidden from you. It's abstracted from you. Okay, so let's look at an example of uh, pass by reference, passing a pointer by reference. All right, so what we'll do is, is we'll create a function that will swap what two pointers are pointing at, okay? So let us say that we're gonna pass two pointer variables as arguments to this function, right? So we would need two pointer parameters and we would need the ability to update the arguments, okay, that we pass to this function. So in order to do that, we need to use pass by reference, okay? We need them to be pointers so, right, I mean, look at this function right here. All it does is accept two integers by um, value. Okay, but we need to be able to accept memory addresses. So we need these to be pointers. And then we need to be able to update the arguments because we're going to swap what they point at. So we need to do pass by reference, right? Students will struggle with this. They'll look at this and they're like, oh my gosh, there's an asterisk and an ampersand right next to each other. What's going on? 
I just explained it. Okay. All right. So if we're going to swap the contents of the first argument and the second argument, we need some swap code. So we'll need a temporary pointer to hold the contents of the first pointer variable argument. Okay. And then we will overwrite the contents of the first pointer variable argument with the contents of the second pointer variable argument. Okay. Uh, and then we will update the second pointer variable argument with uh, what was preserved in our temp pointer here, which was the memory address from our first parameter variable argument. Um, so there is our swap code and this should actually say temp, sorry. Okay. So now keep in mind P and Q in this example, and it's, and it's hard. So, so take your time to digest this. In this instance, P and Q are no longer pointers. They're reference parameters that are referencing pointers, right? Maybe it'll be a little bit easier to see that if I do something like this. Okay. Now, if we were doing pass by reference with regular old integers, you'd see that, right? But we're not using regular old integers. We're using variables that hold integer addresses. So in other words, we're using pointers. So we have to have that asterisk there. So we're accepting two pointer variable arguments by reference. Okay. And remember anything you do the parameter, you do the argument. Okay. So let's go into main and tie this all together. So I will create two regular integer variables, one named X, which I'll initialize to five and one named Y, which I will initialize to, I don't know, two. Okay. And then I'll create a couple of pointers. I'll initialize a couple of pointers. We'll call one X pointer and we'll give it the memory address of uh, X. And then we'll have Y pointer, which will get the memory address of Y. So right here, X pointer points to X and Y pointer points to Y. Okay. So if I dereference um, X pointer, then I should get five, right? So um, here, if I do star X pointer, right, then that's going to give me what? That's going to give me five because I'm going to the memory location whose address is an X pointer, whose memory location X, and then I'm going to get that five out, right? So, so I'll just, I'll just display the contents of it. So star X pointer. Okay. And then we'll put a little space in between and then we'll dereference Y pointer which will get us to the contents of Y through the memory address. And we'll see two there, right? So we should see um, five and two. So let's test that. Okay, so there's your five and two. Now we'll call our swap function. Okay, call swap function. So we'll say swap. And what we're gonna pass as arguments. Now remember, when you do pass by reference, you have to use variables. You can't pass literals or of a straight up memory address. So this isn't going to work. You can't do, um, ampersand X ampersand Y. Okay. That's not going to work because, um, which what ampersand X and ampersand Y are, they're giving you the memory address, which are values. You can't do that it has to be with pass by reference variables. So it's going to be X pointer and Y pointer. Okay. So what we're doing is we're swapping the contents of X pointer and Y pointer. So let's see out X pointer and Y pointer. So we'll see that beginning, right? At the very beginning. And then we'll see the contents of X pointer, Y pointer after the swap. And we'll see what X pointer and Y pointer are pointing to after the swap. So this is pre-swap, pre-swap and post-swap and post swap. All right. So let's take a look at the program and we will uh, see what we get. Okay. So take a look at that output. 
So what's going on? Line 20 is printing out the contents of X and Y through X pointer and Y pointer. So we see five and two, right? And now I'll take a look at the memory addresses. Okay, so this first one here is the memory address of X. It's the memory address that's inside of X pointer. And then this is the memory address of Y. That's what's inside of Y pointer. Why? Because line 17, we initialize X pointer with the memory address of X. We initialize Y pointer with the memory address of Y. Okay, so that explains the first two lines. Then the swap function happened. And then we get the last two lines on our output. Notice now how even though the code is the same, we see two and five because X pointer is now pointing to Y. Okay, because we swap the memory addresses inside the arguments. So X pointer is now pointing to Y. And then you see um, the five there. That's because Y, because Y pointer is now pointing to X. So the pointers are now swapped. All right. So you can see that through the contents of the uh, pointers themselves, line 27. Take a look at the contents memory address that's in X pointer. Okay. The value that's in X pointer was in Y pointer before the swap. Right. You can see it kitty corner there. And similarly for the original X pointer, right, that stuff got swapped as well. So you can see that we changed or we updated the contents of the pointer variable arguments through our swap function because we pass the pointers by reference. You can pass pointer variables by reference, just like you can pass integer variables by reference, double variables by reference, etc. Why? Because pointers are variables that hold memory addresses. Okay, so you can pass a pointer by value as we did in the first example or by reference as we did in this example. So there's a lot to digest there, but in summary, just remember a couple of key things. Pointers are variables that hold memory addresses, okay? And parameters are variables, okay? And if you want a, let's take a look at a prototype here. Okay, so let's say this is bar, okay? If I want to accept an integer, as an argument, then I have an int data type for my parameter variable. If I want to accept an integer memory address, then I have an integer pointer parameter variable. Okay, so we have to have that asterisk. Now this is still do, being passed by value. Do you see an ampersand here? No, if you wanna do pass by reference, you have to do the ampersand. So, if it was an integer variable by reference, you'd have that. But if we want to accept a pointer variable argument by reference, then it's got to be a pointer parameter and it's got to be a reference. Okay. So this is accepting a integer pointer variable by reference. Okay. Okay, so that's going to bring this video to a close. If you're a student of mine, you have questions about any of the topics that were covered in this video, feel free to drop me an email, stop by my office hours, or hit me up on Zoom online. For the rest of you, if you thought the video was useful, please consider giving a thumbs up. If you thought the video sucked, you got the thumbs down button as well. Consider supporting the channel in various ways. You can subscribe, you can join as a member with additional perks for as little as 99 cents. Leave a comment, whatever. But most of all, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.